Hello and welcome to the Introduction to HMIS Data Entry Training Part 4, Project Start. I'm Andrea Carey, a System Administrator for the NCCEH Data Center. This training will teach you about how to enter data collected at intake. What we'll review right now is what is Project Start, what is the Project Start date, how to record Project Start in HMIS, and really zero in on sub-assessments as a particular way to record data. And then we'll review any common mistakes that we want to help you avoid. Let's begin. Let's review what Project Start is. Remember, this is the data collection and entry point that records a client's starting place with your project. Project Start is a snapshot. The data collected and entered at Project Start should reflect what is true about the client on their first day. Do not change Project Start data. Gender, race, ethnicity, veteran status, date of birth, and homeless history, all of these data elements do not change after Project Start. The only exception is correcting inaccurate data that was entered incorrectly in the first place. Required. The majority of data elements are collected at Project Start. This means that all clients that are sheltered, are looking for housing with your project, or benefit directly from your rental assistance must have Project Starts. Remember too that Project Start date is different for different project types. This is the date that is used for backdate mode from the very beginning. Check your enter data as and backdate modes. Start on your head of household's profile, then go to the entry exit tab. You may see another tab called assessments. Never use this for project start, interims, or exits. Stick to the entry exit tab. Then click on the add entry exit button. This button will only be used to record project starts. Households. Notice that the client you started with has their box already checked and grayed out. This client is automatically included. Also notice that there's a checkbox next to household type. If this is selected, all the members beneath it will become checked. By checking the boxes, you have said these clients are in this project. Project start data. Check your EDA and backdate mode again. If the project is not correct, cancel the project start and check your EDA mode, either default or manually select it. You may also need to enter a new electronic ROI if it's incorrect. Next, select the project start type. The type is based on a project's funding source and determines what set of questions are available for you to enter. What type should your project use? HUD includes most funding sources. Use this type if your project is funded by HUD, whether that's from Continuum of Care Grants, Emergency Solutions Grants, or Housing Opportunities for People with AIDS or HIV. HUD is also used for projects funded by local public entities like city or county governments and all other non-federal funding sources. So any private donations or foundation-funded projects should use HUD as their project start type. PATH projects are funded by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, also called SAMHSA. Quick Call is only for call point users. RI projects are funded by the Family and Youth Services Bureau, or FISB and VA should be selected for all projects funded by the Veterans Affairs Department, including supportive services for veterans and their families, grants per diem, and healthcare for homeless veterans grants. All other types should not be used. Call and ask the data center if you have any questions. If the wrong type is selected, several things can go wrong. One, you won't see the right set of questions. Two, your reports won't show your data. Let's make sure your hard work gets counted. Now this project start data window is complete. We can click save and continue. Now that you've put the clients in the project, we have to learn about them or get their snapshot. The next window allows you to enter the project start data elements. 
You will notice that the questions on the screen look just like the Project Start paper assessments. In HMIS, we refer to the electronic versions as assessments. Now let's get oriented to this new window. The top of the page identifies the project and entry type selected. Do not update information here. If the wrong project start was created, exit this window and record the correct project start. To the right, there is an icon of a printer. This button allows you to print the client's responses, not the entire household's. A table below identifies the household members associated with this entry exit and the details. On the left hand side, the household members are listed in a menu format. You can switch between household members here to record the responses for all clients. The current client selected will be blue. In the center, the project start assessment with questions is listed. The header for this box will identify the name of the assessment that is available. If you have a delayed data entry workflow and are operating from a paper assessment, the paper and the HMIS assessment names should match. The assessment here is called Project Start ES, which stands for Emergency Shelter. The project start date, labeled as the entry date, will be to the right of the header. The questions then begin below this. At the end of the project start assessment, click Save or Save and Exit. Save responses before continuing to another household member. Click Save and Exit to close this project start assessment. A summary of this household's project start, interim, and exit data can be printed at the bottom of this assessment. Click Print Entry Exit Summary to decide what details should be included. Which questions do I enter on the project start assessment? Firstly, know which data elements are required for your projects. Secondly, follow directions within the assessments. We've inserted reminders in between questions. The project start assessments, paper and in HMIS, are designed specifically for each project type and funding source. Please review the training and guidance on required data elements if you have questions. Now let's talk about subassessments. What's so special about the subassessment questions? Well, subassessments are a type of question within our entry assessment interim assessment or exit assessment that require more details than other questions. Most questions have clearly marked drop-down menus to enter responses in. However, sub-assessment questions have a different format with a different process. The most common sub-assessment questions are disabling condition, health insurance, income, and non-cash benefit, but there are others as well. In general, once starting a sub-assessment, identifiable by that detail table, complete as much information as possible. There are three steps to every sub-assessment. One, a gateway drop-down menu. This is a yes or no response to the general question. Secondly, add the yes details. Specify a particular type or source a client answered yes to. Additional questions will depend on the sub-assessment. Disabling condition, for example, asks for details on disabilities, income asks for details about the dollar amounts, etc. Thirdly, complete the HUD verification. Answer the remaining type or source questions according to the client's responses. Red means the HUD verification is incomplete, while green is complete. These recommended three steps make sure that nothing is accidentally missed and avoids common mistakes. Let's see how to do this in HMIS. First, the gateway question. We'll use disabling condition as an example. Here, the general question is, does the client have a disabling condition? The response will usually be yes or no. Of course, client doesn't know, client refused, and data not collected are also possible. But these responses don't help us understand the client's situation. Next, add the yes details. Click the Add button to specify the particular type or source a client answered yes to. If the client does not respond yes to any of the options, then we would skip this step. Once you click Yes, a pop-up window will appear with the details for the Yes response. 
Again, these change depending on the subassessment, but they all look approximately like disabling condition. Here, the first drop-down menu refers to the particular type or source a client responded yes to. In our example, the client responded yes for alcohol abuse or use. The next drop-down question confirms that the client responded yes. Here in disabling condition, it's called disability determination. This just confirms that the client's response was yes for the disability type above, alcohol abuse. Every subassessment will have a question to confirm this yes response. Other questions within this pop up window look at the details that are specific to this subassessment. Here in Disabling Condition, you must select whether the disability that was identified meets the HUD definition. Other subassessments will ask for other types of details. Subassessments will also ask for a start date. This refers to the date that the response applies to and is also called the information date or collection date. For a project start assessment, this date will be the same as the project start date and backdate modes. We want the yes response to line up with the entire assessment's timeline. When adding a yes response, you will leave the end date blank. Once complete, click Save. The detail window will close and you'll end up back at the subassessment, but now the client's yes response is summarized in the detail table. Step 3 is to complete the HUD verification. Right now you can see the red warning triangle shows us that it is incomplete. Click on the HUD verification to answer the remaining types or sources according to the client's responses. A pop-up window will appear for the HUD verification. The remaining types or sources will begin with the incomplete column filled in. To complete the HUD verification, you will fill in the rest of the responses with no. In our example, we begin with physical disability. Notice that alcohol abuse is already marked as yes. Keep the yes responses where you already completed the details. Now you can see that all of the types have either yes or no response. You can also select the answer from the list at the top of the new window to fill in the remaining details with the appropriate response. For example, we could have selected no at the top of the page to complete all of the no responses while leaving alcohol abuse as yes. Make sure that every type has the right response, not incomplete, before clicking save and exit. Our HUD verification is green and all three steps are now complete. You can still view all of the detailed responses in the table by clicking on the Previous or Next buttons in the lower right-hand side. There is also another way to view the details. To view all of the responses at once and outside of this smaller detail table format, click on the magnifying glass at the top of the table. This shows the details for every single response, and it can also be printed. Common mistakes to avoid. Subassessment start date is not historical. The start date should be the data collection date. For example, start date is not the client's original diagnosis date or the job history. The gateway and type or source questions should also correspond. A no to health insurance in general does not align with a type or source table that contains a yes for covered by Medicare. Another example is a yes to income in general does not align with a type or source table that contains all no responses for each source. Mismatching the gateway and the type or source is a common typo, but in order to understand a client's resources and obstacles, we need to have consistent responses entered into HMIS. All right, so what are the steps to complete subassessments in HMIS? Answer the general gateway question, the specific type or source questions, and complete the HUD verification. Answer the general question and come back later to fill in the details. Answer the HUD verification first and only. Remember, it's as easy as one, two, three. Answer the gateway question, then the specific type or source questions, and complete the HUD verification. Thank you for watching this Introduction to HMIS Data Entry Training. Part 4, Project Start.